usually i mean earlier we used to say it's a secret language and uh, as far as the medical coding is concerned of course uh, you can say that it's a strict secret language which only the uh, the doctors uh, or the provider uh, more appropriately and the people in working in that field the medical coder and the insurance company understand so this is uh, in short what is the medical coding so we will go ahead and actually find out what is medical coding and what is the opportunities you will have so the medical coding is the process of application of the universal alphanumeric codes alphanumeric means it has some alphabet some uh, numbers also uh, and so it's application of the universal alphanumeric codes to the healthcare services uh, with <clears throat> services that are rendered and this healthcare services is in the form of medical diagnosis they are in the form of medical procedures and uh, some of them is uh, in the form of uh, providing the equipment also so all that is given to you as a coder is coded by you now what is this particular uh, medical coding and why do we need the medical coding so if you see the health insurance or the health care practices in us and many other countries you will understand those practices are way different than the health care practices that you see in india so most of this uh, uh, health care practices in us uk australia and even in middle east they require every uh, individual in their country to have a health care insurance and so uh, this uh, uh, this person or the patient when he goes to the doctor uh, the doctor will provide him a, a certain kind of service maybe it is in the form of diagnosis maybe in the form of treatment and treatment could be the surgery just a x ray or uh, you know the lab uh, you know pathology report or uh, uh, just a biopsy so all these are the various uh, procedures the doctor will carry out and so all this is coded in a particular alpha numeric uh, pattern uh, so that whenever this particular alpha numeric pattern is uh, produced to the insurance company the insurance company will just read those uh, read those alpha numeric pattern and then they will give the reimbursement so uh, this is the work uh, and this is why we require the uh, medical uh, coding in healthcare uh, so uh, we are going to see growth and what how does it work so as far as the american medical insurance is concerned you must have heard about the revenue cycles revenue cycles are there in all other businesses too but as far as the medical insurance is concerned uh, we have there are three pillars of this revenue cycle one is the patient then the provider now in this case the provider need not be only the doctor the provider could be the doctor the nurse paramedics and uh, as well as uh, the pharmacist and the physiotherapist uh, then cryo practitioner all those comes under providers and then the payers payers are nothing but the medical insurance company so this is how uh, uh, these are the three pillars and uh, the medical coder is the basically uh the combining uh, force in between the patient and the provider what the patient uh, needs the provider gives that service and whatever the service provider provide that and the payer so the medical coder comes in between here so it is a binding force between the payer and the provider provider provides the service and the payer pays for that service and where the medical coder comes into picture so how does it work and uh, what do they do that we will see now uh, so uh, medical coding is basically the transformation of the healthcare diagnosis procedure and medical services and supplies into universal medical alphanumeric codes uh, so we have a diagnosis code which are uh, given in this book icd 10 cm book then we have a procedure codes so the diagnosis codes are different the procedure codes are different 
and then we have hectic score they are mainly for the supplies the supplies could be the ambulance could be your different kind of medical beds they are water beds they are recliners then you have the wheelchair the wheelchairs uh, and the nebulizer and even the car, uh, splint different kind of splint uh, so all these are the supplies even the crutches for that matter all those comes under the supply now when we train you we tell you that what is this diagnosis code what is this procedure code and what are these supply codes and that's why you require a special training because uh, suppose the patient comes to you and uh, the doctor uh, the, the doctor's work is to diagnose what the patient has to provide the treatment for that particular diagnosis and then he writes that everything in a report form and after that report is ready then that report is sent to the medical coder and how does the medical coder read that report that i'll tell you so suppose if the patient comes to the doctor and he'll say i'm having abdominal pain so when the patient comes to the doctor with the abdominal pain the doctor examines the patient and he will uh you know he will say that yes this abdominal pain could be because of the appendicitis so that is uh, uh, so when he says ki if it is because of the appendicitis uh, the medical coder will go and find out exact code for the appendicitis okay and after finding out the appendicitis the uh, the doctor will say the only procedure for this particular uh, kind of diagnosis is you will have to take your appendix out so then we uh, there is a procedure and for that we have a code appendix uh, appendectomy so it is a removal of the appendix and for that we come to this particular book which is called as a cpt book and this is basically uh, yeah uh, you know but you can raise your hand and uh, okay you can raise whatever the question you have you can please write it down i'll answer them at the end of the session okay uh, so this is the cpt that is a, a procedural code where uh, you know whatever the procedure the doctor tells may the, whether it is in the form of the surgery whether it is in the form of just a prescription of the medicine that all we will find out in the cpt book and then after suppose the appendicectomy is done and the patient requires a, a wheelchair then we refers to the third book that is a hectex book hcpcs that's a small a short form is the hectex book so uh, in this particular uh, course what we teach uh, the student not only the icd cpt and hectex code that is this hcpcs code and the short form they use is hectex and not only we uh, teach the student how to do the coding rightly but we also give them some knowledge about the medical terminology because if you do not know that the patient has appendicitis what do you, what do you mean by appendicitis now i believe there are certain many students uh, in this today's webinar who might be from a pharma background or who might be from a Uh, homeopathy ayurvedic or dental background they might know the meaning of the word appendicitis uh, but there are some student who are from the <clears throat> biology background but may not be well versed with the many medical terminology so uh, you know before starting the actual coding course we give them the basic knowledge of what do you mean by the uh, different medical terminology what do you mean by cardiomyopathy what do you mean by Uh, gastritis what do you mean by diabetes mellitus so you know the fair knowledge of each and every disease is what is required i mean you don't have to go into the detail of those but you need to have the fair knowledge of all these things what is hypertension what is gestational diabetes so uh, that we explain uh, in the medical terminology form at the same time we give them a fair uh, understanding of the anatomy and physiology of the human body because uh, let's say for example the appendicitis so if you know the appendix is related with your uh, gi uh, i mean digestive system which you all must have learned uh, during your school uh, school days also that appendix is a part of the digestive system 
so if your medical anatomy and physiology knowledge is uh, decent enough then you understand okay this is something to do with the digestive system now why this is important uh, like for example for the icd10 you have written the code is for the appendicitis but if your procedure code says some uh, you write a procedure code which says the fracture uh, the fracture uh, is uh, mended then that is a wrong coding because what is the diagnosis diagnosis is appendicitis what is appendicitis mean it is the inflammation or the infection of the appendix and what the doctor told you to removal of the appendix that is appendicectomy so we tell the student okay you need to understand the terms you need to have a fair knowledge of the anatomy and physiology and you need to apply the right code because uh, what is the main work of the medical coder the medical coder how does it help the medical coders will review the patient medical record and convert all the medical record or the document uh, whatever the doctor provides you don't write the case history you do not write anything whatever the doctor writes doctor has written taken the case history of the patient doctor oh. the diagnosis uh doctor has written everything the report comes to you so let's say the report uh, uh, kalpana uh, can you just mute yourself yeah uh, so this is the report that comes to you and uh, so you as a medical coder what you do is you read this report now in this report what was the chief complaint it was abdominal pain and what was the diagnosis the doctor said the diagnosis is the patient has the appendicitis okay and for which uh, appendicitis acute okay this is and what the procedure is the procedure is the anesthesia was given and the uh, appendix was removed the appendix removal is called as a ap uh, appendectomy okay so after reading this particular uh, case history of the patient you as a medical coder will write this this is called as a coding so this is actually alpha numeric alpha numeric because i see the alphabet k k and most of them are number so this is a alpha numeric medical coding of this report now when this report goes to the insurance company what is the uh, what is the main function of the insurance company the insurance company will read this particular numbers and after reading this particular number now this particular every number has the uh the dollar payment which is written in one particular book and that particular particular book will be there with the medical biller so the biller will be sitting in the insurance company you as a coder from the hospital side from the uh, de, uh you know medical office side you will provide this report it goes to the insurance company the insurance company just see those numbers and after seeing the numbers they will provide they will give the proper uh, payment now wow, wow, what is the role of the medical coder here now if the medical coder don't write the numbers rightly in a particular manner and in particular order then in that case uh, on the hospital side the hospital side may lose the money Uh, because they might not get the right kind of remuneration which is required for this particular case and from the insurance side also the insurance side may lose the money in case if the coding is inappropriate they might end up paying more so that's why the medical coders are helpful not only to the hospitals but they are uh, you know helpful to the insurance company because if they are working for the insurance company they will help the insurance company to reduce their Uh, outflow of the money if they are helping for the hospital company or uh, hospitals or the doctors they will make sure that the doctor will get the exact payment uh, for their procedure so this is a very important role the medical coder carries uh, so as far as the medical coders are concerned we have the various specialized speciality like uh, the coders can work in the outpatient outpatient is basically in uh, us anything that is that does not require the hospitalization is called as outpatient so the outpatient could be you walk in to the doctor's cabin and the doctor is just you know checking you in his cabin and giving a treatment 
or it could be a day surgery day surgery where the hospitalization is not required where you are not staying in the hospital you come in early in the morning get the procedure done by the evening you go home so that becomes outpatient because you are not in the hospital in patient that means when you are in the uh, inside the hospital okay then ed is emergency department you can work in surgery radiology pathology and medicine so as depending upon your interest depending upon your uh, you know uh, specialty you can go anywhere i mean uh, outpatient uh, is the maximum coding that happens but inpatient is a very specialized coding you know i mean once you uh, get into the outpatient if you uh, develop a interest then you can go into the inpatient inpatient coding is slightly different and it requires a fair amount of understanding of the anatomy and physiology so unless you work in the outpatient coding department for some years and when you gain that kind of experience then you can be uh, you can go into the inpatient uh, coding uh, so uh, and then the emergency department coding is uh, also the part of the outpatient surgery coding is also there are uh, a specialized coder who codes only the surgery like cardiac and the uh, cranial surgeries these are very difficult to do it and uh, there are very few coders in cardiac and cranial surgery so if you are really good at it and if you have that kind of inclination and interest you can definitely go for the cranial and the cardiac surgery because the demand for them is always very high because there are very few people who do that kind of coding and it is uh, you know it requires a lot of training uh, then the radiology and pathology so either you get posted yourself in a particular department and have a specialized training or you can do a general co training it's like you know you have a general physician or you have a pediatrician and a radiologist so similarly you will see this uh, then uh, as far as the medical coding companies are concerned you will see them they are in tamil nadu kerala karnataka and andhra Uh, uh of course i mean uh, these are mainly i'm covering south but in uh, now you see there's a major hub which is developing in noida and gurgaon that is in uh, uh, delhi side and of course in maharashtra also bombay and pune they are the big center for the medical coding company uh, tamil nadu is uh, is coming big way and so is andhra and uh, kerala karnataka is the techno capital of the india so uh, karnataka always had a presence of this but now you will see that these remaining other states are taking up medical uh, or the healthcare side big way so this is about uh, the different companies and then you have the list of this company you have navy gaon you have omega you have gebs and then these are the various company uh, technosoft is there cognizant is there and so once you take the training either uh, you know after the training you can join any of these companies and then the company also train you in a particular way because that's what is called as a platform training uh, no video somebody said no video can't you see all of you can you see the videos yes it's visible yes ma'am yeah so uh, i mean these are the various companies uh, which uh, you know gives you the placement so once you clear their uh, you know the interview and if you have the uh, i mean it's not that you have to have a biology background but of course that has uh, you know it takes the priority because then they know that you have a good knowledge of the biology because finally it's a medical field so you will always have the you know more patients and everything related to biology or the medicine so they expect but it's not uh, that there is no hard and fast that non biology background cannot uh, you know enter in this field because uh, there are many good student uh, i had in my uh, previous uh, you know practice where they were hello uh, about the starting salary of the medical coder see i have uh, this starting salary uh, uh, snapshot but it was in 2016 so you can add an additional 10 to 15000 for the every figure that is there 
so once you when you join you jo join as a trainee and that salary will be now 25000 uh, in the beginning uh, then you become the medical coder that comes to roughly 28000 and then the three year medical coder that adds to 35000 and then the quality analysis team lead process lead and then the top management so this is uh, the hierarchy or this is the path you can take uh the trainee because the platform uh, you know the practice is slightly different uh, you know because when you get uh, the client the clients are mainly the uh, the us company so uh, you know it depends on who's your client your client is insurance company or your client is a hospital and then according to mm -hmm. your client there are certain specific mm -hmm. things that are provided to you and that training you get it when you get the job in the company because every company has the different i am in europe can i get a job here with this medical coding certificate yes the uh, europe uh, mainly if you are in europe and if you are in uk and i think in nhs they do uh, have icd 10 cm coding and for the in patient they follow the cpt but for outpatient they don't have cpt but uh, for the inpatient they do have cpt see icd 10 cm that is a diagnosis coding it is uh, introduced by the who so not only in uh, europe but even in india the major hospitals in uh, uh, big cities like manipal apollo and fortis they do follow the icd 10 cm so uh, that is there uh, Uh, every company wants cpc certification and the exam is very costly madam yes so we do train student for the cpc because uh, this training uh, is all about uh, not only the medical coding but cpc uh, there are certain companies they expect you to take the cpc uh, test through you so if you take a training from us then you can join the company and they can also help you out with the cpc exam or you can give the exam now in fact uh, earlier the exam was for 150 question now they have reduced those questions to 100 and earlier the exam when i gave it was for 7 hours now it has uh, uh, cut down to 4 hours so that is the change that is happening yes how should i attempt a cpc exam after training as i am in europe uh, okay so this exam is conducted by aapc that is american the uh, academy, uh, academy for professional pardon do we have a good opportunities in hyderabad yes you have a good opportunities in hyderabad uh are you providing any live project while training uh yes we do provide a internship uh, the more details about that uh, you will get uh, from our team uh, your uh, the team relationship manager you can ask them uh, so the live project will be uh, in the form of uh, mock uh, projects because uh, particularly in this uh, field there is a, lo a lot of privacy rules and laws and once you join any medical coding company you are uh, entitled to follow those laws and regulation because there is a law which is called as a hipaa that is a health uh, information uh, accountability act and you come uh, uh, act and you all come under that uh yes okay so cpc exam i was uh, trying to say something and somebody said and then i so cpc exam is conducted by aapc and this uh, con uh, exam is uh, conducted all over the world so i'll provide uh, i mean uh, you can go to the aapc website and you can look for the europe uh, centers they do have a europe centers and uh, then you can choose your centers and you can give the uh you can give that exam through that uh pune yes pune have many uh, medical coding company gebs is there uh, then three a uh, uh, three uh, i think i forgot because i am not <coughs> but there are very uh, companies ha uh, ha hello ma'am where is the uh, attack pune 
Ah, just a minute. Let me increase my volume. Ah, tell me. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ah, ma'am. Where is the Pune at a medical cooling job, ma'am? Ah. Where is the job, ma'am? Infosys, otherwise TCS, otherwise any other company or so. I will let you know. No, no, I can't hear you. Can you write down your question because uh, your voice is very, uh, you know, so low. What's your training fee for online classes? Uh, the online classes fee is, uh, I think, fifty nine thousand, which uh, not only includes the uh, the course material, but it includes the ICD, CPT, and HECPEX books uh, that will be delivered to your doorstep because those uh, books are important for you to do the coding uh, through the course. Uh, so that is included in that. Uh, see, we do have a portal, placement portal. So uh, you know. Uh, uh, the team will help you with that uh, because uh, the placement portal is definitely active uh, 24 7 so you can just go through that portal and find out the job uh, job opportunities and uh, see 100 percent job guarantee is uh, depends on how good the student is because uh, you know i mean whatever we teach if the student is not uh, uh, not un uh, or is uh, unable to produce what we are teaching then there is no company. I mean, no, even engineering college will give you 100% uh, placement, job placement, because it's uh, finally it's up to you. How do you, uh, you know, uh, produce yourself or perform yourself during the time of interview? All over the world, supplying the Helena. Or delivery. Helena. Sorry yes. for a talk to you. Yeah. I, uh, shall I uh, can complete my education uh, B Pharma in, uh, in the year of uh, 2019? Uh -huh. Then I can uh, start like an uh, German uh, training one. Yeah, uh, your voice breaks in between. Can you please uh, write? Because, the, you know, in the beginning I could hear and then there is a big uh, thing. No, ma'am. Shall I can uh, complete my uh, B Pharma in the year of uh, 2019? Huh? See, anybody uh, who, uh, yes, B Pharma also, uh, B Pharma is also very good, uh, this thing, because uh, you can join and need not be that you have to complete your B Pharma. You can take up the, uh, take this course side by side and you can uh, finish, because we don't require a degree of B Pharma for this course. You can do both uh, side by side, so you can finish your B Pharma and join as any company also, uh, as a medical coder in any company. So uh, the prior degree is not uh, required, but of course your B Pharma, uh, you know, uh, this thing will help. So after ten, we should go to the APC center. No, no, no. Oh, APC center, no. You can APC is a website. You can go to the APC website and then look for the, uh, the centers in your city. So in Europe, suppose if you are in France or Germany or in UK. Uh, put that uh, country and then when you put that country, you will get the dates of the a uh, C, uh, CPC exam in that country and then you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in Germany. Okay, yeah. So you will have to check uh, whether the APC has a center in Germany because I mainly dealt with uh, US and uh, Middle East uh, and uh, I had a few students from UK. So they gave their exams uh, as a medical. Uh, uh, without passing APC exam, could I work as a medical coder in India? So, uh, I mean, after you do the course, our uh, Hindri Harvin certificate has the uh, affiliation to APC. So, if you take that and go to the company, and if the company feels that you are a good student, they can take you and then they will tell you that you will have to give a CPC exam through. So, so that option is also there because the Hindri Arvin certificate has an affiliation to uh, AAPC. Uh, yes, yes. Hi, yes. ma'am. Uh, 2015 pass out and join. Yes. Uh, hi, ma'am. Very good evening. Uh, thank you for a fabulous session. Uh, 
my my question is uh, being an it professional can i do freelancing job in medical coding and if yes then how do we get that okay you are it professional but do you have a previous uh, knowledge of medical coding uh, no ma'am ma'am i have completed my b pharm c and uh, i'm working in one of the mnc uh, in pharmacovigilance but uh, i am very curious about uh, freelancing job i heard like we can do a medical coding job as a freelancing so i just wanted to know about that uh, see basically as far as the freelance work is concerned it totally depends upon your relation since you are working in it i can tell you that that your relationship with your manager the healthcare field requires a lot of secrecy and i told you that as a medical coder you come under hipa law that is a health information uh, accountability law and because of that law unless and until you work in any company for 2 years and uh, you know gain the confidence of your manager that you can work remotely without leaking any information to anybody and you have a fair good uh, firewall at home then they will because uh, many coders in us they work remotely but for that you have to have this thing uh, first of all good uh, you know rapo with your manager he should have that faith that you can do this work without any you know uh, leakage uh, of any information because this information is you are getting the direct personal health information of all the us patient and us is all about secrecy so once they have it uh, there are many in bangalore who are i mean since i am from bangalore i can talk about a lot of my colleagues who are doing it but they had the previous experience in the company so they worked in the medical coding field for at least minimum 3 3 years before uh, st starting remotely but yes you can do that is okay thank you so much ma'am got it yeah and after b pharma you can uh, you get the job in pv in which company pv stands for what pharmacovigilance ma'am yes i uh... you get the job of yes you can get the job uh, in pharmaco vigilance also you can get a job as a coder also so it depends on what you want to do you want to do a pharmaco vigilance uh, this thing then you can go and approach the company and get the job if uh, i can talk about medical coding because uh, medical coding is what i am telling one big question somebody has that madam the age is 32 now and and qualification is b for my working as a area sales manager from last 10 years i want to switch for medical coding but nobody is hiring they are asking for cpc uh so uh, balbir's uh, thing uh, this question was asked he is 32 see till the age of 36 they should hire you but your qualification is b pharma what you require is uh, uh, experience in medical coding and though your b pharma and area sales manager does not give you any authority in medical coding you have to have a training in medical coding field because uh, once you get that training yes you can go and uh, you know give the interviews also because there are many uh, students of mine who without giving cpc also cleared the interview joined a, a particular company and then they gave cpc exam but that was i, I see i am talking about this scenario in 2014 15 when the medical coders were very very few and the require the demand was too high and the supply was too less so maybe that was a case that time they were hiring without even cpc they were taking the student and after uh, you know working they used to tell ki okay now you give the cpc exam but uh, i don't know the present market scenario but yes i mean you can give cpc exam but uh, you with our kind of training you should be able to clear the interview and then can uh, go for the cpc there is one more uh, session i have a good experience in medical transcription and want to switch to okay the person who has a very good experience in medical transcription what he requires is only the coding uh, knowledge because you already are well versed with the anatomy physiology and medical terminology so what is important in your case is just the medical coding training uh, to switch to my how my past experience will help it will help tremendously because uh, you know the cases very clearly so 
the medical transcriptionists are the best medical coder because they will never go wrong mostly because they have seen so many cases physiotherapy graduate passes out uh, see when you have uh, passed out doesn't matter it is you must have passed out in 2010 also you take the training and you can join ah uh, oh my god wait a minute the questions are going too fast i did my msc by <coughs> after completing training no one is hiring man they are taking asking cpc certificate experience also no one is hiring for freshers okay so then you will have to give the cpc because i told you ki i am talking about uh, little pass when the uh, demand was too high msc biotechnology current working and associate editor in science journal is my experience valid for medical see your uh, any biology background experience is valid but still you require the training of the medical coding is, is must can i directly appear from cpma yes if you uh, that means you already have a cpc experience cpma is a uh, tougher than cpc so if you are so confident then go ahead i mean definitely because cpma is very important and nowadays for the audit uh, and drg cpma is the certificate that is uh, very much in demand what is the duration of the course the course duration is 90 hours and uh, so that is uh, roughly 3 months and we take the alternate day two hours classes the classes are conducted in the morning evening we do have a evening batches too so i uh, depending upon your uh, you know uh, time if you guys are working you give up on working you can still uh, accommodate the timing saturday sunday do the course or uh, at night we have certain batches running in the morning we have certain batches running so according to your uh, this thing but cpma must do it's big time in demand because of the audit and drg so that means that person has the experience in medical coding what is your current designation what is your current designation my i am a trainer trainer does has a different a different designation than the coder because i train the people i don't code okay there is a difference between the trainer and the coder <clears throat> so i am a medical coding trainer i code at the immenses as well as i code i mean i used to code now i have joined this i completed my training but no one is hiring my me because they are asking for so i mean if that is the demand in the market then you need to give the cpc exam uh, we do conduct the boot camps or uh, i mean uh, see this uh, 59000 fee uh, gives you one year uh, free uh, you know access to all the study material uh, so in case if you haven't uh, you know uh, understood a particular topic you can again uh, take extra classes so and plus uh, the books are there so all those things comes into that one year and then of course uh, you know we have uh, people who will help you with the soft skill how to write your resume to look better it's a course 3 months Three months uh, beginning from uh, medical terminology. Now I saw one student of medical transcriptionist. He may not require the anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology. He can directly join the, for the coding. So in that case, the you know, duration will be less. They are not hiring for fresher as well as their experience. Fresher means uh, fresher means is the the course completed fresher or uh, which fresher if it is a fresher that means the person who has taken the training they have taken the training so uh, yes then that means the, the cpc is must everybody has to give cpc mm -hmm. yes. okay uh, ma'am yes. hello yes. ma'am what kind of question will be asked in the examination of cpt or uh, uh, apc it it will be mcq type or what kind of question uh, cpc yes cpc ask uh, it is a mcq kind of questions the questions are tough uh, uh, and uh, they are not i mean tough in the sense more than tough they are very smartly asked questions so uh, for example uh, 
they will ask the question what uh, the patient underwent appendicectomy and okay. then below there will be four uh, options the first option will be uh, you know the removal of the appendix the second option will be inflammation of the appendix the third option will be uh, you know curing the inflammation of the appendix and you have to pick up the right option so these are the kind of question you will be asked or if it is the icd related then they will ask okay which is the correct coding and uh, you will have some 10 codes in that and you will have to pick up the right uh, answer so that comes with the experience that we teach you that yes this is the right code and this is not the right code because for one patient for the diagnosis there is not one code you write you write minimum four to five codes so i will tell you that yes in that four to five code what is the hierarchy why are you writing this code first and why not this code so that comes with the training yes, so all the questions will be in mcq form yeah yeah the 100 marks uh, this is 100 marks every question carries one mark and every question has four options you have to choose the right option and you have four hours and though you feel oh 100 marks and four hours is plenty of time you get just two minutes to crack one question and that is not enough so then we teach you uh, you know how to solve that path that what is the way for qualifying exam, uh, what marks, uh, up to minimum marks required? Qualifying, uh, I think now earlier it was 70%. 70 percent. Uh, yes, 70%. So out yeah. of that, uh, number of attempts, two. Oh, yeah, yeah. So seventy percent in so in a hundred marks you have to have minimum seventy two, and in one fifty it was I think one one ten. Madam, am I dentist? Is there any advantage for dental students as a medical coder? Yes, I mean doctor. Any advantage? Yes, it's very good advantage because. Uh, there is a very good chance that if you have a good knowledge about the field, you can be the process lead or the team lead. Because for the team lead and the process lead, they expect you to understand the detail of, uh, you know, the uh, disease process. Like, for example, if the patient has a diabetes, then what are the problems related with the diabetes? Uh, you know, the patient will have a retinopathy. The patient might... Uh, have the you know uh, atherosclerosis so that comes with the prior knowledge of uh, good medical uh, medicine so i had plenty of dental i used with even the medicos doctors also had taken this course so yes neuropathy yes what is that neuropathy yes neuropathy and retinopathy can we get jobs in it company IT, yes, you can get a job in IT companies because this is the, uh, you know, one vertical of the IT company. IT companies uh, works in a various uh, vertical. So one is the health vertical and in the health vertical, you have a pharmacovigilance and you have a medical coding and you have a insurance related things. You can work also for the government. I mean, uh, because in US, the Medicare and Medicaid, these are the government insurance. So if you are good, you can work in that. You can work in Middle East because in Middle East, uh, they follow the American uh, insurance model. So there also, I had many students from Middle East who were working in that field. Yes, any, uh, remember this thing, any biology or the life science related, D pharma, B pharma, all the medical, uh, you know, though you are a physiotherapist, uh, you are a doctor, dentist, Ayurvedic, homeopathy. Yes, it would be of a, a big advantage because, you know, the system requires you to understand uh, all the disease process very well. Can you please let me know companies in Hyderabad for the medical coding? Uh, madam, you please go to Google to find out all the companies because I can talk only about the companies in my field that I do. What is the future of medical coding as the... Uh, okay. 
this is a good question artificial intelligence they have been trying the artificial intelligence in the medical coding field but so far the success is only 35% 35 to 40% so uh, because uh, you know uh, for this particular field you i mean if you are working for the insurance artificial intelligence uh, is finally a robot and the they will work what is what information is feed fit to them but in this particular field we require lot of changes like if i am working for the hospital my coding will be different if i am working for the insurance company my coding will be different because when i work for the hospital i am their employee so i'll make sure that the hospital will be benefited more if i am working for the insurance company so it depends who is your client and that the artificial intelligence has or the, those are the limitations of the artificial intelligence so so far artificial intelligence has not entered that much into the medical field in fact they were trying for all the diagnosis uh, but the yet no luck completely because finally artificial intelligence is built on the previous data and uh, the good thing is every human body is different and so what did the what the human brain can do the artificial intelligence cannot so those are the limitations so how is the scope of medical coding in delhi it's good it's uh, it's coming big uh, big way uh, i think in uh, noida and delhi there are many companies i would suggest that that information you'll have to find out from uh, uh you know going on to the google and the delhi uh, medical coding company Are. that kind of a thing because i uh, i don't have much knowledge about delhi there many post as medical coder what do you mean by post i didn't get your question uh in the hospital uh, in india you mean uh, i think in india nowadays uh, for the uh, this thing hospital management they expect you to have a fair knowledge i i refer to same question medical coding yes somebody said i want to ask the question yes yes i can't hear the question hello hello yes hello ma'am ye ye hota kitne time ke liye 1 month 2 month 3 month iski jo pura jo course hota wo kitne din ka kitne time ka hota hai 3 3 months ka hota hai acha 3 month ka hota hai aur jaise matlab humne exam aaj se humne exam dena iske liye form bhara usse pehle agar hame मतलब आप प्रिपरेशन भी कराते हो उसकी जैसा हमें एग्जाम में वो क्वेश्चन अगर ना आए तो जैसे मैं था, मतलब मैंने एम बी ए किया हुआ है और जैसे नहीं कर पाया मैंने एग्जाम कोर्स के बावजूद तो आप प्रिपरेशन उसके कराते हो जैसे मतलब आई थिंक ऐसे जैसे मॉक टेस्ट वगैरह होते हैं ना उस टाइम का i keep telling you uh, the question on cpc exam they are very okay. strictly uh, asked so uski okay. preparation is must agar aapko ek attempt to make wo clear karna hai so yes definitely i would suggest ki uski preparation karna zaruri hai kyunki so yes ma'am jaise ab aapne to course course kara you can uh, still a course course only this a uh, बट हमें एग्जाम देना है इतना बड़ा अमाउंट जाता है उस एग्जाम का और फिर अगर बाई चांस ना हो तो उसका एक ऐसा लगता है कि हाँ तो ये कोच मतलब जैसे आप प्रैक्टिस भी कराते हो साथ साथ मतलब जैसा कोर्स पूरा होने के बाद भी रिवीजन टाइप जो होता है वो चीज हाँ सो so वही है कि ये टोटल कोर्स का जो फी है दैट गिव यू वन ईयर ऑफ यू नो द गोल्डन पासपोर्ट वॉट गोल्ड पासपोर्ट वॉट यू कैन से सपोज आपको अगर फिर से लेना है फिर कि नहीं नहीं मुझे नहीं समझ में नहीं आ रहा ये टॉपिक सो इफ यू वांट टू जॉइन सम अदर ट्रेनर बिकॉज सी फाइनली ओके गो अहेड सो द यू कैन डू इट विल यू सेंड बुक्स टू सऊदी अरेबिया काइंडली आज दैट टू द यू नो द रिलेशनशिप मैनेजर यस आई एम श्योर बट दैट इज यू विल हैव टू आस्क 
uh, whom whoever you are contacting for this uh, information do ask them if they can provide the book to saudi arabia okay okay okay, okay. ma'am coaching fees is different or exam fees is different total is is the around yes exam fee is totally different coaching fee is totally different coaching fee covers only the course the course material three books and uh, the preparation that's all okay okay exam fee is only uh, that on examination only yes what kind of course material will be provided to us is like we'll be conducting the classes so that is the course material then we will give you uh, you know lot of uh, practice questions uh, for okay. initially just the beginning ki uh, like for example if the patient is having abdominal pain how will you code that to how will yes, you yes, yes. i am uh, i am uh, my husband is also in this uh, company and uh, medical coding so uh, so then to he will have a good uh, information about that yes ma'am ha uh, so ha uh, I mean, so ma'am, ये ऑनलाइन कोचिंग की एक्चुअली मुझे फीस का पता करना था और ये होता कैसे है और इसकी प्रैक्टिस भी कराते हैं वो लोग या नहीं कराते या 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 वो प्रैक्टिस तो कराते हैं डेफिनेटली दे डू इट एंड आई से दे प्रोवाइड द वर्क मटेरियल Uh, will be provided what kind of course material uh, so ma'am, actually ये हाउ मैम हेलो यस गो हेड आई एम हियर आप क्वेश्चन करो बोलो मैम इसका जो एग्जाम की एग्जाम जैसे हमने हमने कोर्स कर लिया उसके कितने टाइम बाद हम एग्जाम का फॉर्म फिल करते हैं सी uh, सर्टिफिकेट करने के बाद इट्स टोटली अप टू यू कि आपको कब एग्जाम देना है बिकॉज ऐसे नहीं कि कोर्स अगर तीन महीने में खत्म किया तो चौथे महीने में आपको एग्जाम देनी है यू कैन गिव एग्जाम एनी टाइम देर इज नो रिविजन और प्रिपरेशन और प्रैक्टिस अगर आपका कोर्स हो गया आपको दो तीन बार रिविजन करना है कर लो चार बार रिविजन करना है कर लो दस बार करना है कर लो आफ्टर वन ईयर एग्जाम देना है आफ्टर वन ईयर दो Nobody is telling you you have to give exam immediately. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, last time जो था ना वो update जैसे मतलब अब update हो गया ना last time तो one fifty question आते थे और अब hundred आते हैं. Ready आते हैं. अभी see when I passed the exam it was six hours exam. One fifty question. I passed when it was ICD nine, not even ICD ten. ओके ओके तो अभी तो एग्जाम बहुत कम हो गई है हंड्रेड मार्क्स की हो गई है चार घंटे की हो गई है सो देन एंड एग्जाम्स देर आर मेनी सेंटर्स अर्लियर देर इज टू बी ओनली फाइव सेंटर्स बट आई थिंक नाउ एवरी बिग सिटी हैज अ सेंटर एंड देर आर मैम ये आपकी एक स्लाइड थी मेडिकल कोडर जिसमें मेडिकल कोडर सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड आई एन आर जो लिखा हुआ है वो हम लोग ट्रेनिंग में आते हैं उसके बाद ही होता है या फिर इसकी सैलरी इतनी स्टार्टिंग में होती है क्या ये आर सेकंड पॉइंट जो है ना मेडिकल कोडर वन सिक्स ट्रिपल जीरो आई एन आर जो लिखा हुआ है हाँ. ये 2016 का दिखा रखा है सो यू एड अ टेन टू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड ना इन्फ्लेशन भी तो उतना हो गया है ट्वेंटी में जो चीज पांच रुपए में मिल रही थी आज वो अगर थर्टी रुपीज में मिल रही है सो यू हैव टू एड द इन्फ्लेशन नंबर ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड यूके वेर ऑलरेडी so it takes time and you know icd 9 to icd 10 we did that jump and suppose if you are a icd 10 uh, coder and if you are certified icd 10 then uh, if they change to icd 11 you have to just give one icd exam because the cpt won't change the only icd changes nahi ye meeting chal rahi hai na okay ma'am yeah and then you know, that exam is just uh, you know it just the uh, Uh, freshening up or something uh, I don't remember, but I gave that exam. It was just uh, some 
50 marks uh, exam. It was not a full fledged exam because they were just, you know, they just uh, test you for your ICD knowledge. I uh, uh, ICD-10 is very important because nowadays uh, home health care uh, cases are coming to India. I mean, that uh, account is coming to India. Home health care requires ICD-10 big time. Okay. Yes, anyone? So shall we stop any more questions? So, yes, I think there is one more question. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, ma'am. Last question from my side. Uh, about I want to know about CPT. Uh, CPT is a collection of medical terminology or something else? No, no, no. CPT is the clinical procedure terminology. Mm -hmm. So, so mostly medical terminology will be there. So, are you a doctor or what is your qualification? I did my uh, graduation with botany honors and then I did a diploma in medical lab technology. Ah, and so, I, so the, no, no. So, CPT, we do it for the procedures. For procedures, surgery. Yes. Ah, surgery, various kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. So I am from pathology. Uh, is it only for surgery? Is helpful for me for this course? Yes, yes. Why not? I mean, uh, who's asking this question? I think somebody else is asking this question. Yeah, is it only related to surgery or no, different no. medical aspects? Different medical. It could be surgery. It could be radiology. It could be medicine. It you know why it is used actually? Uh, so surgery, CPT is basically or the procedure, the procedure, basically the treatment coding, treatment coding could be, you know, the doctor might just prescribe a medicine or uh, just do the abscess drainage or do the fracture also. So, you know, the treatment can be anything, right? Okay. So, uh, the tre uh, you know, when well, we... Give the okay, what about the diagnosis, like, you know, if you talk about psychiatry and other files, yes. there are certain diagnoses, there are DSM codes also. So you have a ICD-10, which is a generalized diagnosis. But okay. suppose if you get into the company and if you have a flair for that particular field, okay. then you can get into specialized psychiatry coding. Yeah, there is a specialization also. Okay. Or suppose if you are really good in surgery, then you get uh, you know promoted for only surgery coding. Okay. And that's a little difficult because, you know, uh, yeah, you might end up writing 100 codes for one patient. And that is the knowledge of uh, human, you know, biology or even the surgery, surgery, the whole surgery. Yeah, yeah, general surgery and specialized surgery. Yeah, I mean, for example, suppose if the patient underwent a CABG, that is coronary artery bypass graft. Okay, so, yeah. You know, what is the approach? Which, uh, you know, we call it cabbage actually. We call it in short cabbage. cabbage. Yeah, cabbage. Excellent. So, whether it is an arterial graft is taken or venous graft is taken, what are the procedures done before that? What are the procedures? But that comes when you take that as a specialized uh, thing. Okay. Fine. Fine. Somebody Fine. said Fine. opting for HH. HH is uh, home health. Home health is uh, home health mainly do ICD 10. So, if you are good in ICD-10, you can directly get a home health. They mainly do only ICD-10. Any more questions? Uh, the books related Hello, question you can ask. Yes, go ahead. I am from Mahesh Pune. Uh, can you speak a little loudly? I can't hear you. Sorry. Hello, madam. Uh, Hello, madam. Yes, go ahead. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to go to the I am going to go I am See, till 35, every company hires you. Till the age of 35, every company hires you. 35, 37, if the demand is more, you know, for like somebody asks, can I give CPM exam? CPM is the audit and DRG, which is slightly tougher exam. 
there the age limit has reduced till the 14 hello 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 has lot of uh, you know good understanding hello ma'am yes go ahead yeah is this uh, course given by you is valid internationally yes do we need to write any examination if you are moving abroad no if you give the cpc exam anywhere in india in anywhere on the earth that cpc certification is valid in canada america uk us india philippines singapore anywhere because this is the apc certificate apc is the american body and uh, that certificate is valid anywhere uh, on the earth <laughs> they are using icd most of the countries are the poor countries aren't but middle is big time uses singapore philippines uses because i had student from them so and there it is mandatory for all the uh, people in the healthcare to know icd icd 10 is uh, introduced by world health organization it's a big factor actually ma'am pardon is age a big factor like higher ages people can't apply uh in india uh, in india they are little skeptical but uh, abroad there is no age bar you can get a job at the age of 60 also okay so but in india it is restricted to how, what age uh, 36 and then they stop i don't know what is the reason because <laughs> i mean if you have i mean of course if you have worked in that field earlier then they are they are higher okay a little bit flexible actually yes case. because mm-hmm. see what they require is the prior experience no that's true that's true but why age like if a person is having the aptitude to do it why age can come in between actually why age is a restricted part here that's to every that's to about everything in india no because india has so yeah, that's true, that's true. but but where where there is a physical exertion part part i can understand that age is a factor like uh, but where you are using just to having the skill to do it and you are having a lot of experience behind you <coughs> why age comes here like Yes, yes, but I can tell you from my own experience <laughs> that uh, I had this issue, so I want to make it clear. Okay, okay, fine. Thank that you. They don't allow you to even enter inside any company if you are about that age. Okay, so in India actually. Yes, yes, but in okay. Middle East and US and you uh, Canada, you get, you know, you just show that and you get a job. So there might be certain reason, some valid or logical reason for that. Like I can't understand. So the supplies, the payment or money or something like that. So maybe, maybe you have to just complete the task actually and have to do it successfully. That is the only. Here the supply is very high. So and when they are getting the youngster, why will they look for the old? Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That is one of the big reason actually. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. So that is the only problem here. But otherwise, uh, no. Okay. So okay, we'll stop here. Any other question related to uh, this thing, you can, you know, get in touch with the, uh, you know, the company's uh, head who are with whom you are talking to regarding the book supply and anything else. If you. Madam, I am not here to answer your questions. I want to give a clear picture that CPC exam. You, I think now they have reduced the fee to three fifty dollars, and um, so the fees, uh, uh, the exam is costly. And uh, in two attempt, see in that three fifty you get two attempts. And I expect all my student to clear in first attempt so that there is no pressure. And most of my student have cleared, so it's not that it is very difficult, but. i mean think smartly is the only thing i keep telling and i mean that's what we do we train the student to think smartly that's all yes you can give third attempt but it will be a burden financial burden is high 350 dollars multiplied by what is the latest rate is 82 rupees or 80 rupees right so that all information you will get on aapc site so kindly you can go to that site for the exam related info because they keep changing that uh, uh, the fees and even the centers if you want the uh, centers 
but i suggest when the student is well prepared then only give the exam and give it and pass it in first attempt that's all so we'll stop here and uh, i hope uh, this was a helpful seminar to webinar to all of you and i hope you will have a good future and continue to progress like this thank you very much all of you students thank you again